Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Thank you for joining me today. So yeah, I think let's go through some of the big games this weekend. Um, I think great win by Ireland, well done. I think uh, respectable performance by England and I think at least a consistent performance by South Africa. So yeah, let's start with the England-Japan uh, game. I think Japan really showcased that they are an up-and-coming world power. Eddie Jones has done a lot of good things there. And it's nice to see almost Eddie Jones' past face Eddie Jones' future. As you could see, out to about the 60th minute, Japan really had a hold on the game and really showed the, the speed of the ball that they can play, how well and quickly they can move the ball left to right. And I think it, uh, England actually really had to question their ability to defend there. I mean, they could hold the All Blacks the week before, but this week, hard time against Japan. So it was a different English team, but I think it also showcases also how strong the Japanese um, and speed of the Japanese line is. This is insane. So overall, strong performance by England. I think they... They need to question their ability, especially being dragged in and their ability to, to, to cover up wide. They, I feel the forward pack was a little slow to, to wrap around to cover the, the wings, especially that five meter area on both sides of the, the rails. So I think that is something that Eddie Jones needs to look at. But overall, they did in the end showcase why they are a world leading team and they brought it to the end. So well done to England. I think they just at least continued that quality and later on as they wound down the uh, Japanese team, really at least continuing their growth, and I think it's going to be great to see them going to the World Cup. On Japanese side, I think it's all about conditioning now. They've got the playing style, they've got the work the play, works of their players, they've got the talent and the ball handling skills to move forward. Now it's just all about quality, and, uh, and now it's just all about um, conditioning. They need to make sure they can play the 80. So overall, good to see, and a nice up-and-coming team. I love seeing that. Moving on to the SA. Scotland game. I think Scotland once again showed their ability to move the ball around, some speed. The second half for me was a much more grinded out, slow affair. First half, beautiful tries, good movements of the ball. South Africa had some uh, definite improvements in the lineout, continuing marks, at least improving over his first game with England. Uh, Dwayne from Yellen showed his ability over the ball. And I think Kitsoff, Marx, and Dwayne really are starting to come uh, coming to the home as a team. And as I've always said, I prefer them in those positions. Kitsoff is great and there, and I'm liking the starting. Uh, Dwayne is better at 80. He had a much more ability to get on both sides of the play instead of only playing on the open or, uh, or open or blind side. So that was good to see, and I think he really made an impact in that position. And Peter Steph, again, a force. What a tackling force this week when he's on a lock, when he has the ability to uh, make an impact right after a ruck or scrum. So I think that was good to see Peter Steph. And I've got a feeling that this is almost settling to be the... Um, Bach pack. I mean, between Achis Neyman and Itzavet, I'm not really bothered. Both Achis Neyman had a great game and is continuing to develop his popping game out of play, especially with the first try. What a pop and what a play overall by, the, by a bunch of uh, the box really there. It's nice to see that continuity, that a uh, support play coming through there. It's what we want to see. It's what we want to grow. So I think Alkis Neyman, I think even Etzebe, in my opinion, has something to learn from Alkis Neyman is his ability to put players into space. And I actually like, I think that he needs to be developed into the World Cup player he can be. And I'd like to, uh, I definitely want to play with that. I mean, we've got a lot of great lock options with Lua Diacha coming in the second half, also doing some good tackles. Uh, not a much, it started scrums, not much of an open play, but he did very strong in the defense. So I think overall, I think he can be happy with that performance. So moving on to the back line, Embrace Papi really showcased why he can be one of South Africa's top choice um, scrum offs. He was solid, fast, a ball, less than a ball a minute. Uh, so pass rate, so outstanding amount of passes, really quality. And I think he, he uh, mixed it up. I think he had a better first half than second, but obviously as he gets into confidence, he'll grow that. But with, with Wayne Vermeulen on one side and Pollard on the other side, I think they both helped there. And talking about Pollard, stunning uh, performance by him side. Uh, effective uh, scoring the second try, one of the main players in the first try with putting Papir into space and really uh, commanding himself and growing his position there. So overall, nothing too bad about it. Obviously, I know he kicked that missed the last kick in the second last kick, he hit the post, but I don't think there's anything bad about that. And once again, it's good to see to play out the game with an with the Alton Yankees uh, Pollard combination. Yankees is becoming a strong super sub with Pollard in center. And something that Damien Darlin, in my opinion, needs to start questioning about his game is that he keeps on being swapped out for a fly off to, to play 80 minutes and you can't. So I feel Damon Darlin is probably the weakest bad play in the back line. Uh, he really hadn't didn't do a lot of impact. Uh, he didn't put Kuehl into much space and had a hard time there. So I do want to question Duck. I think he's he's having a hard time putting his stamp on the game. Kuehl, uh, first try, 
but I think it was a consistent play. Going into the back line, Villeneuve had a good one. The yellow card, in my opinion, I didn't agree with it. It was a, a, a skip pass to past two or three players and Villeneuve ran up to try and catch that. He did not try and knock that down. In my opinion, that was obvious that if you're going to throw a pass like that, expect somebody to try and intercept it and don't do that. I mean, that was just, that was in my opinion, just poor play from Scotland to do that. So that's my opinion of it. I don't think it should have been a card. Maybe a penalty if you want to get really picky, but even just a knock-on is where it would have been drawn. If I was, look, if you follow the rules, that's how it should have been for me. But yeah, that's it. Uh, Gray area. Overall, I think everybody had a good performance, uh, some growth and consistency among the box side. I think their defensive uh, defense is showing to show very well in this tournament, and I think there's just good things to go forward. Uh, the wings on either side, Corsi and Dianti, uh, not a lot that they could do this game, I feel. Um, it's something that they've got a question about the back line moving across, I feel. We, uh, we need to look at that and see if we can spread the ball as well as Scotland and they've done a much better job. So that's definitely something that South Africa needs to work on, especially getting the ball into those players' hands. Uh, Colby had, was probably my favourite sub. He really did a good job, uh, as he always does. He really knows how to find space and step play as well. Moving on to the Ireland-New Zealand game. What a game. Game of the weekend by far, even as a Bach. Wow. World superpowers going against one another, and the Northern Hemisphere finally toppling the Southern Hemisphere. Congratulations, Northern Hemisphere. You really are showcasing this whole tour, how strong and how much you've grown. Overall, every game is tight and hard fought. Even the Australia-Italy game, Australia fought hard for that win. So overall, I think that just is one mouth watering. I think what is funny is one of the biggest things is Rory Best had a horrible weekend, not horrible, but pretty bad weekend against Argentina lost, whereas this one, on the money, perfect. He was the best at that. And he really, you could see that on, on New Zealand almost found a way in later on uh, in the game when he was subbed. But overall, solid performance from uh, Ireland, really making sure that New Zealand could get, couldn't get him back to the game and actually outscoring them in the last uh, 20 minutes, something New Zealand hasn't done ever. And also, I think the first time in something like 20 years, New Zealand hasn't scored a try. Um, in a game and also lost the game. So first Irish win in Australia for Ireland over New Zealand in Ireland. So congratulations Ireland. I think it was just all, all and my major thing there was exceptional defense that I just noticed. Ireland was on that ball every time. They were much stronger in the forward pack driving in New Zealand back every time they got the ball. And New Zealand has a hard time playing. It's something South Africa showed also. Hard time playing forward ball and playing their style when you drive them back in the tackle. So I think we're really starting to get a recipe here. Um, everybody can be happy. I know New Zealand's all impressed that Dorman's, uh, it was Spieth who obviously an ex-New Zealander uh, developing that, but I think all credit to Irish rugby and Irish rugby players. What a performance. Overall, just quality. But yeah, thanks guys. Please comment down below your opinions of the games, how you felt, what you enjoyed. Yeah, let me know. Thanks guys.